Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening and welcome to Prime Time Local News. One more person has died from COVID-19 in Saskatchewan. The person was in the over 80 age category from the South Zone. There are 259 cases of COVID, 21 of those in the Northwest Zone. The Northwest 2 subzone, which is the immediate Lloydminster area, has six new cases and 75 active cases. Total active cases in the province are 4,107. 128 people are in hospital, eight of those in the Northwest. 24 people are in intensive care, including one in our zone. 214 more people are listed as recovered. The Lloydminster Regional Health Foundation is getting ready to host their Christmas Radiothon on December 15th. Jace Mackey spoke with Sean Newman for more. I'm joined today with uh, Sean Newman. He's the host of the Sean Newman podcast, and he's also going to be uh, hosting the uh, Lloydminster Regional Health Foundation Radiothon. It's going to be taking place a little bit further down in the month. Uh, Sean, thanks for taking some time to talk to me today. Yeah, thanks, Jace. Thanks for having me on. So uh, just first of all, we'll talk a little bit about the Radiothon, but first, can you just tell me briefly a little bit about it? Yeah, well, it started last year. Last year was the first one we did. Um, kind of got pitched at me if I was willing to sit and talk to myself for 12 hours kind of thing. We had a couple of pre-recorded videos, and, and we just sat in the hallway at the hospital and uh, talked to doctors and nurses and a few people uh, from around the community, and we ended up raising $50,000. So it was uh, uh, pitched again this summer uh, if we could – do it again and obviously uh, COVID restrictions and everything going on is is making life difficult or challenging for a lot of people but with an event like this um, we've just kind of picked away at it and figured a way around some of the restrictions and and we're going to make a go of it December 15th and it should be a lot of fun. So it's taking place on December 15th uh, where will people be able to uh, listen to it and uh, be able to kind of just take part in it? Yeah, so it's it's a Facebook live stream, so they can either go to the Sean Newman podcast uh, page or Lloyd, uh, the LRHF page, Lloydminster Regional Health Foundation, um, and then there will be a YouTube stream under uh, Lloydminster Region Health Foundation as well, and so it's just a live stream. They can click in whenever they want to and uh, see where we're at during the day. Uh, the goal is to raise $200,000 this year. So it's a, it's a lofty goal, but you know, knowing our community, it's something that can be uh, attained. And uh, obviously the, you mentioned the goal there. What are some of the focus of uh, where the money will be going towards? Yeah, so a big uh, part of it and why I'm so happy to be a part of it is the hospital. Uh, it helps everybody in our community and, and the surrounding area. And then continuing care, you know, um, continuing care has been a big, uh, they've had a lot of lockdowns and a lot of um, isolation from people. And if we can lend some help uh, to those two parts of our community, that's where the money's going to go and, and put to some very good causes in these trying times. And obviously this has been a difficult year and a trying year, uh, especially for the Health Foundation, dealing with, you know, having to handle the pandemic and the stress of just people not being able to donate as much financially to different organizations. For you personally, what's it like to be able to uh, give back, even if it's just your time and uh, talking for those hours straight, what's it like for you? Well, I, uh, Malcolm knows this uh, about me. I relish the opportunity. Um, 12 hours talking is, uh, is a lot of fun this year. It's going to be a little different. We got, you know, um, about 50 to 60 different guests, whether they're calling in like this on a zoom call beforehand or actually on the event. Uh, and so it, it's, it's exciting for me, uh, to sit down and take uh, part in an event like this. And, and, uh, anytime I think anyone has the opportunity to help, uh, the community and, and, and some different, um, things that are struggling or need attention in our community I think is, a, is, a, is just spreading a little bit of positivity. And, and I, I look forward to it. And, and I cherish opportunities being even asked to sit down with you, Jace, is, a, is, a, is an honor. And uh, obviously, the best way people are going to be able to contribute to this is uh, financially. But is there a need for any maybe volunteers before, uh, before it starts? Well, normally I'd say, yeah, volunteering would be awesome. But as you know, uh, the actual day, we can only have so many people um, around it. And we got to make sure we're doing certain cleaning protocols to any guests that come in, that kind of thing. So uh, realistically, 
Um, the best way for people to get involved is with their money. Uh, it's go to lrhf.ca forward slash radiothon. And there's many different ways to get involved. It's not like you got to give a big sum. Um, we have Mikey Dubs uh, running this year for 12 hours on a treadmill and you can donate per kilometer. It doesn't have to be a big amount. It can be 25 cents a K if you really want. Um, all of it goes to a great cause. And, and that's probably the best way this specific year to get involved. All right. Well, before we end it today, is there anything else you want to add? Well, the other thing people can do is on the live stream, they can come and comment. And uh, I look forward to seeing what people think of what we, we got going on this year. And uh, just look forward to everybody supporting this. And, and hopefully it, it goes off without a hitch. But thanks again, Jace, for having me on. I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for taking some time to talk with me. And I wish you guys the best of luck as you uh, get ready to host this Radiothon. And I hope uh, it's a smashing success. Thank you. A new community initiative is encouraging people to make sure they support local businesses this holiday season. Connor Chan has more. Well, joining us today is Kurt Price from the new Lloydminster Nissan and Maria Coconuts and Eleni Young from Spiros here in Lloydminster. Uh, here to talk about the 12-ish Days of Christmas, a campaign that's going on to help promote shopping local. So just to start off, you guys, what is the 12-ish Days of Christmas? Well, it's, it's a local thing. And what we want to do is we want to promote local businesses and we've turned it into a contest. You mentioned it as a contest. What kind of contest is it and how can people enter in? Well, you have a chance to win awesome prizes for one thing from many local businesses, but these two have taken it really personal on who can shop better. And I didn't, I didn't realize they were so competitive. I'm super competitive. So and the apple did not fall far from the tree. I think you could say that. And so when we look at the comments, you know, for liking and sharing and who picks who, she'll text me at sort of all hours of the night and she'll say, mom, I think you're kicking my butt on this one or looks like I'm winning or. But the point is, is we'll both go through the stores that we're uh, promoting and we'll shop and we'll each pick out some different things and then we give viewers the chance to sort of vote on who they think shop better and uh, as a result that actually gets them an entry into uh, potentially winning one of the prizes that we've shopped for so it's kind of a fun way to get people engaged and then also to win stuff as well yeah and if your name comes out of the draw you win whichever prize that you have actually said the person who shopped better so a lot of times that might be a, a, a prize that is valued at way higher than the other one because because maria she can't shop with a budget talk about how important it is for your message of encouraging people to shop local during the holidays and especially even now during these times where you know covid still is playing a major factor in the economy i think that we can all collectively agree that uh this year has been tough on people that are non-business owners as well as people who are business owners oh, you know yeah. If you're uh, not a business owner, maybe there's been some kind of a job situation in your family or it's just been tough. Uh, and then for people that are business owners, it's been hard to stay on top of the protocols that are always changing. Uh, it's been hard to promote without the ability to, you know, get out there and actually be a business owner and, and be really involved yeah. with your patrons. Uh, so we wanted to give people the opportunity to see, first of all, um, how well these businesses are instilling these protocols in place and keeping everybody safe. Uh, and then we also wanted to show people that, you know, it's important more than ever to support local. Christmas is usually people's uh, business owners' biggest time of the year. It's their harvest. It's their harvest. So, you know, when we give people that opportunity to look and see what there is hap or what's happening, what there is in these stores, uh, it makes it a little easier for them to shop local, maybe without even leaving their home. So we're just encouraging people to uh, to support our local economy here in Lloydminster. And let's not forget how fun this is. It's flipping yeah. fun. We're having a great time. We're connecting with businesses. We're, I think we're bringing a little bit of light and fun into the doors, you know, through those doors when we walk through. Because, you know, they just never imagined that, number one, their Facebook likes would you know, <laughs> skyrocket. Yeah. Um, and you know, I guess number two, that people would say, oh, hey, we didn't know they had that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to go and, you know, it's just, it's generating traffic and generating chit chats about, you know, say Willow yeah. Creek. I remember when we, when we did Willow Creek, I mean, one of the things you said was, gosh, I didn't know they had 
you know. Yeah, there's so much stuff that I didn't realize so much, that, yeah. that they had. And I think that, that that's a, another neat aspect of it is you get to meet the store owners or the managers or the people yeah. who run these businesses mm -hmm. and you find out that they're just as stressed as you are. Yeah. Maybe in some cases a little bit more, Absolutely. but they're doing whatever they can to keep their entire staff uh, supported and employed through COVID. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've learned doing this and meeting these people is that throughout most of the retail year, a lot of these businesses are not making money. They're breaking even. Right. And then when it gets to the Christmas season, Connor, that is, as, as the ladies have said, that's their harvest time. And that's where they start to see a little bit of profit. And lastly, is there any final thoughts that any of you want to add on top of what we already talked about? I think just the shop local aspect is, is really Huge. important. Yeah. And the other thing that I would point out, and I don't want anybody to stop shopping local, but in talking to some of the store owners, they're seeing it. And believe me, okay. they are thankful for it, yeah. that people are shopping local. And the other thing that I've heard about, about this program, this or, or this, this contest, whatever we the want to call it, days. the 12 ish days of Christmas, is that it makes people want to shop local. And they're seeing things, they're seeing mm -hmm. things in the stores that they didn't know were there. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going, I gotta go check that out. Like, I didn't realize I could buy that right yeah. here in town. Mm -hmm. Or there's items they've never even heard of or seen before. So you're sitting on your couch going, I don't know what to get mom and dad, or I don't know what to get my brother. And all of a sudden you watch one of these videos and you go, hey, that would work. And it's right here in town. Mm -hmm. And also you can uh, support these local businesses without actually stepping foot in their business. Like if you can't really truly afford to have a huge elaborate Christmas this year, which a lot of us are in that boat, simply liking their page sharing their page getting involved with their business online is actually a really huge form of support uh, without spending a dime or leaving your couch so that's awesome too and i just want to end with one thing the other night i watched elf and um you know what at the very end uh santa's sleigh gets off the ground because of the spirit meter getting you know it it goes from zero to whatever and he gets his sleigh off the ground and you know i see you smiling connor and i just want to say i believe santa she, she believes in santa connor i believe in santa but i also believe that we in lloydminster are getting santa's sleigh off the ground and we're bringing the spirit of christmas just in a little more just because of the 12-ish days of christmas well, Kurt, Eleni, and Maria, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to know that you're encouraging many people to shop local, and hopefully this 12-ish Days of Christmas gets people out and shopping local. So thank you. Another metal, metal monolith has popped up, this time in Southern California. The mysterious object was found on a hiking trail about halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. This is the third monolith to be found in the past few weeks. The original was found in the Utah desert. No one knows who put it there or where it went when it seemingly vanished. Another one was found in Romania, which also disappeared after being discovered. Now our Connor Chan will take a look at your weather forecast. Thanks a lot, Jasmine. Looking right now, of course, we had another great day outside for us today. Lots of sunshine as we're kind of getting the evening down. Two degrees was our daytime high today is what we currently are sitting at right now. Of course, we did have a little bit of sun earlier and it's starting to get dark. We did have the wind chill coming in close to 20 kilometers an hour, so it felt a little bit more so like that minus one, but still nice weather nonetheless. But as we look at some other temperatures in the area, we see one degree in Vermilion, St. Paul, Bonneville and Cold Lake. Very warm out in Edmonton at five degrees with two in Vegreville, two also in Provost there. We also see minus two in North Battleford, minus one currently in St. Wahlberg in Maidstone with three degrees in Isle of Cross and in Green Lake as well. Now take a look at the satellite radar map. There is a chance of some rain activity going on just in the outskirts of Edmonton there and even around that Edmonton area as well as we see up north in the areas just above uh, Cold Lake there. So Edmonton could see some showers in the next couple of hours or so, maybe even into tomorrow as well. But as we take a look right now at North Battleford overnight, minus seven with some cloud coverage going into tomorrow, the daytime high of two degrees with some clear skies continuing on from what they saw earlier in the day today. Minus five overnight in Cold Lake with some cloud coverage going into tomorrow. Nice daytime high there of four degrees with the wind just shy of 20 kilometers an hour. So it could be a little bit colder in terms of the wind chill. So it could be just more so like minus one for tomorrow. 
And then for us here in Lloydminster, minus five with a little bit of clear skies overnight and a few clouds going into tomorrow. Another two degree daytime high for us tomorrow with sunny skies. Now as we look into the next couple of days here on Saturday, we will get some more cloud coverage coming in there. We'll still have two degrees throughout most of the weekend there. Of course, we'll get a little bit cooler with the wind chill as it gets a little bit colder each day there by increments of two degrees. So it could feel more like minus eight on Saturday, but still some cloud coverage there. Two degrees there on Sunday with some clear skies and with the wind chill it could feel more so like minus 10. We'll have a little bit of cooler morning to start the day off there on Sunday with that to start the day off there at minus six. But that is a look at your weather forecast for now. We'll have more prime time local news coming up after the break. Welcome back. Alberta Beef Producers is wrapping up the year, holding its year-end resolution meetings as it looks ahead to 2021. Eric Bay has more on ABP's upcoming changes. Producers can expect changes to how they receive information, with Alberta Beef Producers announcing an updated plan at its producer town hall. Starting in January, ABP will move away from its grassroots news towards a new app, magazine and digital content platform. Our online communications hub acts as a daily resource and the platform for the information that's most relevant to producers. It will include content such as market reports, research technology, global affairs, business management, trends and what's happening with within Alberta beef producers. ABP's radio program Cattle Country will continue to be used, but only for breaking news as the group branches out digitally. We will bring Cattle Country back in if there's a pointed message on something that's happening in the industry that we need to connect with producers on. But for regular, more consistent chats, we can get that through the uh, app where we can push out some notifications and the app will include daily uh, daily, weekly, and monthly content. Decisions are still being made on ABP's plans for the new year, with resolution meetings continuing tonight. Producers do need to register for these meetings and can do so at the website albertabeef.org backslash producers backslash events. Resolutions can be submitted to the ABP office prior to the meeting via email or fax. The resolution meetings take producers' feedback and use it to create ABP's priorities for the upcoming year. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. Now we'll take a look at your egg prices. This week's Around the AJHL, Evan Kenny chats with a local product who will be hitting the big stage soon. While his time in the AJHL was short, Connor McLennan came to play. He had four points in four games, scoring all four in a 7-4 victory over the Short Park Crusaders. While only playing four games with the club, McLennan had nothing but praise for the team. Yeah, no, I think uh, Eric Thurston's done a really good job with that group there. Um, they have uh, they have some good players there now with uh, Gagan back, Hops, uh, Bamber. Their their core group's really good. So um, just being able to go there for I mean it was only four games, but I'm just go there and um, try and help them out for for the small time I was there it was uh, definitely a lot of fun. Scoring is something McLennan is used to by now. He led the U15 Canadian Sports School Hockey League in scoring, led the World Under-17 Hockey Challenge in points. Last year in the WHL, he scored over a point per game and was named to Team Canada's Holenka Gretzky Cup team. Yeah, it was it was a great experience. Um, we had a, we had a great group of guys and and a great coaching staff. Um, just came up short there in the gold medal game, losing losing to Russia three two. But um, no, it was a, it was a cool experience going over to Europe. I've done it a couple times, but um, to to play for uh, play for your country, it's uh, there's nothing really quite like it. So um, anytime you throw that jersey on is uh, is pretty special. 
After all that, the Philadelphia Flyers took interest and took Connor in the sixth round, 178th overall in the 2020 NHL Draft. It's uh, it's a pretty crazy and hectic day. You got uh, family and friends um, texting you and wishing you wishing you good luck and whatnot, but. Uh, once you hear your name called, it's just a, it's a real surreal feeling. And to uh, go to the Philadelphia Flyers was was a kind of position A for myself. I think um, they didn't have too many picks there this year, so um, I think it's all in all going to be a good situation. But um, now, really, the the hard work starts. So um, getting drafted was obviously a pretty cool feeling, but um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Since the AJHL season has been paused, McLennan will not return to Drayton Valley, but instead will return to the Winnipeg Ice when the WHL starts up in January. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Now we're Connor and Chan. We'll take a look at your weather forecast. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Looking right now, still sitting around that minus two, uh, not minus two, plus two. That's not really something I normally would say around this time of year. But plus two we, right now for us here in Lloydminster. We also see three degrees in Edmonton and Athabasca, along with White Court zero in Jasper, one in Rocky Mountain House and Red Deer, and then two degrees, in, one degree, excuse me, or two degrees in Ed's. And yes, there we go. As I try to get my numbers correct there, one degree in Meadow Lake, minus three in Melford, uh, Saskatoon, and Melford, minus four currently right now in North Battleford. As we take a look at some northern temperatures up in northern Saskatchewan, we see some positives right now in the Lash of Buffalo Narrows sitting at three degrees each minus five in La Ronge with minus four in South End and Flynn Flon there minus seven for Wallace and Lake and then we see minus six in both Uranium City and in Stony Rapids eight degrees right now in Fort McMurray one of the warmer spots in northern Alberta minus one in Fort Chippewain minus five for high level and then zero degrees for Peace River and Grand Prairie and then one degree right now for Slave Lake now taking a look at southern Alberta we see double digits in Lethbridge at 11 degrees right now fours we see in both Medicine Hat and in Swift Current in on the Saskatchewan side there. Three degrees in coronation and then zero right now in Banff. Taking a look at southern Saskatchewan. Speaking of which, minus four for Kindersley. Two degrees in Moose Jaw and Estevan. One right now in Regina and in Yorkton as well. And as we look across the rest of the country, some cloud coverage, of course, being the theme here as we look across there. Minus one in Winnipeg as it gets into the evening there with some a little cloud coverage into the evening. Minus one in Quebec City right now with four in Toronto. Eleven in St. John's. Then clear skies in the evening right now in Halifax. Three degrees in Edmonton, as we mentioned, with some sunshine. Clear skies in Regina right now. Seven in Vancouver with some cloud coverage. Minus one in Yellowknife right now. And then we see one degree up in Whitehorse in those Northwest Territories. A little bit of a break from the snow that they usually get. Now, as we take a look into tomorrow right now, two degrees expected for the daytime high in Lloydminster for us here. Two degrees in Mar Wayne for tomorrow as well. We're going to see more warmer days in Vegreville at five. Six in Lac La Biche for tomorrow. Edmonton going to continue warm temperatures as well, sitting at four degrees along with Wainwright with three degrees in Bonneville, four up in Cold Lake and in Pearsland as well. We'll also see four down in Macklin tomorrow, two degrees, a little bit cooler in North Battleford and St. Walberg, along with Green Lake as well, and then three degrees in Isle of Cross and Meadow Lake for tomorrow. Now here's what we could see over the next seven days. Two degrees will be the number we see for the next little bit here, including Saturday, where we will get a little bit more cloud coverage there. Clear skies again on Sunday. As we get into Monday, we'll have a high of two degrees once again there with a little bit of cloud coverage and sun mix. One degree there on Tuesday as we start to get a little bit colder because by the time we hit Thursday, we'll be back to those minus temperatures there. Minus six degrees is our daytime high. And then zero we'll see there on Wednesday is one of the maybe potentially one of the last days we have in the middle there between positive and minus temperatures there. We usually average around minus 8 for our daytime high and averaging minus 16 for the daytime low. That is a look at your weather forecast for now. We'll have more primetime local news coming up after the break. Deanna Fontaine. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very good. So the Alberta RCMP have launched their own Instagram to show positive stories. How did this idea come up? 
Um, we're just looking at new and innovative ways to connect with Albertans. And this is a platform that we can reach a new demographic uh, in Alberta. We know a lot of our users and clients are not necessarily on Facebook or Twitter, which are our existing platforms. And so this is an opportunity to branch out into a whole new space online. And what can residents expect from this Instagram account? Uh, a very positive experience. We're not using it historically like we would on Twitter and Facebook. It's not going to be used for operational purposes, it's just for positive interactions and positive examples of our, our members interactions with Albertans out in their work in Alberta. And why do you believe this Instagram account is important to have for Albertans? Well, it gives us a chance to share with Albertans what our employees are involved in, how we're working together with citizens to make their communities resilient, safe and secure, um, and how we are citizens of Alberta. We're Albertans working with Albertans. We're a part of the communities that we work in. It gives us a chance to show examples of our work, but also who we are in the province that we work in. And what sort of posts have been posted already on this account? We launched this account with, uh, it's more of a historical uh, kind of snapshot of the RCMP in Alberta over the last hundred or so years. And then we've continued on with uh, community member posts and sort of where we work posts to kind of showcase members on and off duty to kind of give an example of who we are on shift and off shift. And what kind of content does the Alberta RCMP hope to post in the future on this account? We will be focusing on positive content and positive interactions in the community and hoping to be interactive and have some two-way conversations with Albertans. Um, hopefully planning some Instagram takeovers depending on different events that might be happening in our communities at our detachments. I know there's some limitations right now with the COVID restrictions, but hopefully as life, um, you know, continues and things improve over time. Um, those are some of the things we would like to see to be able to show kind of the inner workings and some of the specialized sections that we have in the RCMP and kind of the behind the scenes of the RCMP to be able to demonstrate our special skills and the work that our members do in our rural communities in Alberta and even in some of the uh, urban centers as well. And what sort of campaigns was the Alberta RCMP trying to showcase through this account as well? So as part of our regular work, we have a Where We Work campaign and the Community Members campaign. Those two campaigns are where we have members who are out on the street doing their regular duties. They do submissions to our communications showing the environment they work in, some of the beautiful places they work, the beautiful people that they work with, as well as the community members campaign shows both sides of a member's life. So a police officer at work, but also how they volunteer in the community and become involved and be truly become immersed and seamlessly a member of that community where they work. Albertans serving Albertans. Uh, these are two programs that have been ongoing and we're using Instagram as well as an opportunity to showcase those two programs as well as our Twitter and Facebook accounts. Also opportunities to show partnerships with stakeholders that we have, our community groups like Crime Stoppers, Rural Crime Watch, um, Victim Services, all of the community groups that we work with in each of our communities, there's an opportunity for us to demonstrate and show that on Instagram through our posts and to show all of the good community work that we do uh, with our wonderful community members each and every day. And how has support been with Albertans for this Instagram account so far? I, I think it's been great. Like we started out with very few followers the first night and it like quadrupled overnight and it's been growing steadily each day. Uh, the interactions have been very positive. The support has been great. We've received great welcome from the media and coverage in the news and we hope to see it continue to grow and our interactions and that two-way dialogue with Albertans to continue and to um, just see where things go. Well I personally think this is such a great idea that the Alberta RCMP are planning to do this with the Instagram account and show some positivity especially during COVID. Is there anything else you'd like to add for residents to know about? 
Uh, just that we look forward to connecting with Albertans, hearing their thoughts and suggestions for their policing needs. You know, there's now three platforms for them to tell us what they'd like to see, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Alberta RCMP is here to listen and want to hear your thoughts and uh, share. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're very welcome. <laughs>
the messages and explore the areas that we want to explore. And if anyone is looking to get the books or find you on social media, where should they go? Yes. Well, my website is always a great place to start. That's katherinehudsonfiction.com. And I am on um, Facebook and Instagram at Catherine Hudson Fiction, Twitter at Exquisitely Dark. And uh, the majority of my books can be found across the board on all major platforms, Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Apple, um, the Accessory to Magic series, and a few others can also be found all on Amazon as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. All right, taking one last look here at your weather forecast. Two degrees over the next couple of days here, including Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll see some cloud coverage there on Saturday with a little bit more there. Clear skies again on Sunday, and then we'll have a little bit of sun and cloud mix there for Monday, as well as into Tuesdays. We're going to start to gradually uh, increase in cloud coverage there. We're going to start to get a little colder as we get into the Thursday there, as we did say it was, you know, minus six earlier, but of course it did change on us there. So minus two is expected there for Thursday, as we are going to get some more cloud coverage, potentially some colder temperatures among us as we are getting very close to mid-December. Thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News. Have a great night.